alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We pray that everybody is well and more so in this blessed month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our fasting, our recitation of the Quran and other acts of worship that we're preparing and doing in this blessed month. And alhamdulillah, we are fortunate again today to have Sheikh Ali Saleh bin Humaid with us, um, who will be inshallah continuing to take us through this journey of the life story or rather the seerah of um, one of the living luminaries of our time, Habib Umar bin Hafiz, may Allah preserve him. And if any of you are new to the lessons, um, we welcome you to um, our lessons. And um, should anybody have any questions, inshallah, feel free to hold on to them and then you can post them through right at the end of the lesson, which um, wouldn't be um, longer than about half an hour, inshallah ta'ala. حياكم الله سيدي غبت عنا حسن عفوا <تصفيق> كان عندي اتصال في بالجوال يعني كان واحد اتصل مرحبا المجال لكم سيدي نعم. نعم الان لكن انا اعطيته طيران الان خلاص طيب حتى انا اطير معكم ان شاء الله um, so Sheikh Ali just said that he's um, put his phone um, he received the call 
hence the interruption. Uh, but he's put his phone now on flight mode in order for him now to take us spiritually flying, inshallah. Tafadda. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-musallim Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa alayna ma'ahum wa fihim bi rahmatihi innahu arhamu ar-Rahimin. Wa awalan nagul lakum Ramadan mubarak wa kullu aamin wa antum bi khair. Wa ila Allahi agrab insha'Allah. Sheikh Ali, may Allah preserve him, began with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There after sending salutations. On Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and then wishing everybody a blessed Ramadan and a Ramadan which brings us closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kunna gad dhakarna fi al-dars al-maadi an Sayyidi al-Habi Umar dhakarna al-milad wa dhakarna kathalik al-bi'ah al-lati kana ya'ishu fiha Sayyidi al-Habi Umar. And just to recap from the previous lesson, we briefly touched about and mentioned Habib Umar's birth and spoke about the environment wherein he grew up in. الذي عندما نأخذ سيرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ربما قد يقول البعض ذاك رسول الله وإذا أخذنا سيرة الصحابة فربما يقول البعض أولئك أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولكن نحن نأخذ شخصية هي موجودة فيما بيننا فلذلك لا عذر للنفس في أن تقول ماذا أن تقول لا يمكن أو كذا فهو موجود في هذا العصر الذي نحن موجودين فيه وهو بهذا القدر العظيم من القرب من الله سبحانه وتعالى والقيام بالعلم والدعوة إلى الله ونصيبا وافرا من السلوك. And the reason for us then speaking about the seerah of Habib Umar, at times a person could hear the seerah of, for example, Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and say, well, he was the prophet. And likewise, we could hear the seerah of the companions and say, well, they were only on that level because they were companions. However, speaking about a person who's living with us in today's times, then this could be as a closer encouragement for people to attain that proximity and connection to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Habib Omar has attained these things. وقد كان سيد الحبيب عمر في وقت ميلاده وفي وقت نشأته في سنواته الأولى كان في عصر ازدهار في العلم وفي عصر ازدهار في القيام بالدعوة إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى وكان ذلك بسبب وجود رباط تريم وقيام رباط تريم بالتعليم وبإخراج العلماء وقيام الحبيب عبد الله الشاطري الذي كان متربعا في رباط تريم حتى ذكر أنه كان هناك خمسين عاما في رباط تريم وهو يقوم بالتعليم والتربية حتى تخرج كما ذكر بعضهم أكثر من إثنى عشر ألف عالم في ذلك الوقت من رباط تريم so let us understand more as to the times in which Habib Omar's upbringing took place. This was a time where the institute called the Ribat, which is an institute in Tarim, was well known for its knowledge and its efforts of dawah. And at the forefront of everything here at the in, in the Ribatarim at that time was Habib Abdullah al Shatri, who was, it was said about him that he spent 50 years teaching and guiding the students from that particular institution, Ribatarim. And it is reported that over 12,000 scholars graduated through him. 
وقد كان سيدي الحبيب محمد بن سالم بن حفيظ أحد هؤلاء المتخرجين ورباط تريم والذين تربوا في تريم وأخذوا منهج العلم والدعوة إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى وكان من من أصغر أولاده أصغرهم سنا سيد الحبي عمر فكان سيد الحبي عمر متعلقا بأبيه كما أن كذلك أبوه كان متعلقا أيضا بسيد الحبي عمر فكان يأخذه كثيرا ويمشي معه كثيرا حتى أن سيد الحبي عمر تأثر بأبيه منذ نعومة أظفاره يعني وعمره سنة سنتين ثلاث سنوات كان متأثرا بأبيه رضي الله عنهم أجمعين And after us having mentioned that 12,000 um, scholars graduated, 12,000 scholars were produced from this um, illuminating institution, Ribat Tarim, from amongst these scholars was Habib Omar's father. And Habib Omar's father was one of the, the scholars also who graduated from this institution being known for the level of knowledge which he has reached and the dawa effort which he was engaged in. And at the time, while he was, um, while he was um, disseminating knowledge and calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Habib Umar was his youngest child. And there was a very strong attachment between the two, i.e. Habib Umar very attached to his father and likewise his father very attached to Habib Omar. And he would always take Habib Omar with him to, to, certain, to certain gatherings. And from this, we can appreciate and understand then that the spiritual nurturing then was already at its highest from a very, very young age. And from the Habib Omar, يوم من الأيام كان أخذ شيئا من الخيوط الخيوط هذه الصغيرة كان يشبهها بأسلاك السماعة المايك ويأخذ شيء يعني من الأعواد وكذا ويجلس ثم يتكلم كأنه يخطب أو كأنه يحاضر الناس فكان الحبيب محمد يدعو زوجته الحبابة نور يقول تعالي يا حبابة شوفي عمر ماذا يفعل فكان سيد الحيمر كأنه يحاضر ويتكلم هكذا تشبها بأبيه ويجلس أبوه وأمه والديه يجلسان أمامه ويدعون له بما شاء الله له من الدعاء ولعل ذلك كان من أقوى الأسباب في أن يجعل الله سيد الحيمر بهذه بهذه المثابة وبهذه القيمة التي نشأ بها من العلم والدعوة إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى so let us understand then as to what extent his father had an effect on his upbringing. From among the stories that was mentioned is that many a times Habib Omar would take a thread, uh, a thin piece of string, and pretend that it was a microphone and thereafter make speeches start speaking with this thread. And we can understand that this behavior or this act that he's doing, he most certainly saw it from his father, who, who he'd always keep close company with. And when this would take place, then his parents or his father, his parents would look on and other people would look on. And from within, with um, out of joy as to the imitation or the emulating of the young boy of his father and would make du'as for him. وفي الخامسة من عمره سيد الحبي عمر كان والده يصحبه معه يأخذه إلى بعض المجالس وكان من تلك المجالس المجالس الكبيرة التي تعقد في تريم وخصوصا في رباط تريم كان يأخذه معه فكان سيد الحبيب مر يقول كنت لا أفهم ماذا يدار وماذا يقولون في المجالس قال ولكن من كثرة الحضور صرت أحب تلك المجالس وأيضا كان الحبيب محمد عنده طريقة الحبيب محمد كان يحمل معه شيء من الحلوى 
فنسميها نعنع نسميها نعنع نون عين نون عين هكذا هذه الحلويات قال سيد هيمر قال كان ابي لا يعطيني شيء من الحلويات الا في المجالس قال اذا بدا مني الملل والكسل والتضجر قال يعطيني شيء من الحلوى قال فكنت احب المجالس لاجل الحلوى هكذا في هكذا في البدايه ف والده الحبيب محمد بن سالم كان يحمل شيء من النعنع في المجال من النعنع نعم الحلوى so it was one of the one of the things that um Habib Umar's father Habib Muhammad would engage in is also attending gatherings of remembrance um the remembrance of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what his father would do as an encouragement for his attendance is that he would always carry with him um mint like sweets and these sweets would only be given to habib umar during the actual gatherings what's the say نعم ذكرنا ان سيد الحيومر كان يحب المجالس في البدايه اولا لاجل الحلوى لان قال والده لا يعطيه الحلوى الا في المجالس وهذا من الاسباب يعني نحن نتعلم كيف تكون التربيه عندما يعني يكون الاب يراعي ابنه ياخذه معه للمجالس ويحرص عليه يعني ياخذه يربيه لا يؤذي احد في المسجد لا يؤذي احد في المجالس فهذا من اقوى اسباب التربيه وان ينشا ينشا الطفل على التربيه الحسنه So Habib Omar then we can all understand and appreciate that he started liking um the attendance of gatherings with his father because he knew that at, at these gatherings his father would then gift him or give him um these mint like sweets and if we look at this method methodology and this uh, means of how his father would connect him to the gatherings this is definitely something that we should make a note of and also emulate these means and methods in our lives ايضا كذلك من اقوى الاسباب التي كانت تؤثر في سيد الحبيب عمر انه كان يرافق والده في الخروج الى الدعوه وكانت الخروجات في الدعوه الحبيب محمد كان يخرج مع بعض اقرانه في الخروج في الدعوه كان يخرجون بالسياره الى بعض المناطق والقرى البعيده واحيانا يبيتون الليله والليلتين لاجل نشر الدعوه هناك فكان سيد الحبيب عمر يحب ان يرافق والده حتى انه الـ الـ والده الحبيب محمد كان يامر ان يذهب الى عند مسجد المحضار لماذا؟ لان السياره كانت لا تكفي وربما اخوان سيد الحبيب عمر كذلك يريدون معه فكان يقول له تقدم الى عند مسجد المحضار فاذا وصلنا هناك ناخذك معه فيذهب مع سيد الحبيب محمد في الخروجات في الدعوه الى الله وكان يتاثر بلا شك بتلك الخروجات وما يتنزل فيها وقيام الليل فيها وغيرها من من الامور. And in addition to the father's encouragement of his son attending these gatherings Likewise, he would also, Habib Umar would also accompany his father on the various dawah outings that he would go on in the nearby villages. And the benefits are so many that we can mention as to what would take place during these dawah outings and what are the things that Habib Umar would witness. And just to, just to mention one, he would see them engage not only in calling to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however also engaged in night prayer كذلك ايضا من الامور التي كانت تؤثر في سيد الحج عمر انه في سنواته الاولى كانت تلك هي اخر ايام حياه الحبيب علوي بن شهاب الحبيب علوي بن شهاب هذا الذي يعني 
كان صادعا بالدعوة وبالتعليم ثم بعده كان الحبيب محمد بن علوي فالحبيب علوي كان في آخر أيامه فأخذ سيد الحبيب مر إلى الحبيب علوي ودعا له ومسح على رأسه وكذا ثم بعد ذلك الحبيب عمر صار يعني من من شيخه ابن الحبيب علوي وهو الحبيب محمد بن علوي بن شهاب and during Habib Umar's upbringing it coincided with the last years of Habib Alawi bin Shahab who was also known for his piety for his knowledge and was one of the leaders within um, the, the spiritual leaders within um, the Ba'alawi path at the time. And an incident took place where Habib Umar was brought to Habib Alawi bin Shahab and who then in return made, made special du'as for Habib Umar. And as a result, after Habib Alawi had passed away, one of the main teachers of Habib Umar became Habib Alawi's son, who was Habib Muhammad bin Alawi bin Shahab. أيضا كذلك من 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 الناحية السياسية ومن ناحية الحكم، فكان في تلك ال ال الأيام هي آخر أيام بريطانيا الحكم البريطاني الذي كان الاحتلال على حضر موت. وكان الاحتلال البريطاني كان في عدن وفي شبوة ثم في آخر أيامه انتقل أيضا إلى إلى حضر موت فبعد ذلك بعد بريطانيا حصلت هناك أمور وتولى الحكم هناك فرقة تسمى بالفرقة أو الحزب القومي ثم جاءت الشيوعية فسنتحدث عن هذا إن شاء الله وسنتحدث عن كيف خطف سيد الحبيب محمد وماذا جرى وماذا فعل الحبيب عمر وأين كان هذا إن شاء الله مما سنذكره إن شاء الله تعالى في درسنا القادم بمشيئة الله And what is also of relevance to Habib Umar's um, upbringing is for us to mention the political environment that was at the time which um, witnessed the exiting of um, the the, the British who had colonized certain areas such as Aden, and then they were replaced by other colonizers, the, the communists. And the reason why we're mentioning politics here is that because within this mention, we come also to understand as to what took place in terms of, and the events that surrounded the abduction of Habib Umar's father. And inshallah, we'll mention that inshallah in the upcoming lessons. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us from the pious people. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessings of this blessed month of Ramadan to make us with the pious people, not only in this life, but also in the hereafter. Amen, Allahumma amen. Tafadalu, ida kana hal yurid ya gul jay. For the few minutes that remain, inshallah, Sheikh Ali is just opening up the platform for anybody to ask questions pertaining to what we discussed today.
so we'll begin, inshallah, with um, the first question. And um, feel free to send your questions through, inshallah ta'ala. حياكم الله سيدي هناك السؤال أنتم معنا سيدي نعم تسمع صوتي؟ نعم سيدي آه السؤال يقول آم هل بدا ذكر السيد الحبيب عمر اسباب وصوله الى المراتب الاعلى من حيث من حيث الترقي هذا السؤال الأول نترجمه أولا ثم تفتحون بالجواب إن شاء الله. So the question I asked has Habib Omar ever mentioned what was one of the key reasons which made him have such high ranks? Uh, maybe an advice for students like us. تفضل سيدي. نعم. هل السؤال واضح سيدي؟ واضح السؤال نعم. سيد الحبي عمر أحيانا يذكر نعم يذكر أسباب الترقي والأسباب التي أوصلته إلى ما هو عليه الآن ولكن إذا نلاحظ الأسباب التي يذكرها سيد الحبي عمر غالبا يذكر الأسباب أنه بسبب أبيه بسبب مشايخه بسبب البيئة يعني الأسباب لا يكون فيها شيء من الفخر ولا يقول هذا بسبب مثلا اجتهادي بسبب حرصي بسبب كذا لا كلها الأسباب التي يذكرها يقول من بركة الشيوخ يقول من بركة السلف من بركة السنة وهكذا So the answer to that question is that yes Habib Omar does mention sometimes and we'll notice in his replies or his mentioning is that he never speaks about himself And he never mentions any, he never attributes any of these spiritual achievements to himself. He would rather attribute that which he achieved to his father, to his teachers, to the environment that he grew up in, and also to the, the pious predecessors. Naam, Sayyidi. Naam, Hadahu. Wallahu alam. السؤال الثاني كم كان عمر سيد الحبيب عمر لما بدأ في حفظ القرآن وكم كان عمره كذلك لما بدأ يحضر المجالس مع أبيه نجيب أو تترجم أولا نعم سيدي نترجم طيب The question is asking How old was Habib Omar when he started memorizing the Quran and when he started attending gatherings with his father فضل سيدي نعم بالنسبة لحضور المجالس نحن قد ذكرناه كان من بعد عمر الرابعة يعني في عمر الخامسة وما بعدها كان يأخذه والده لحضور المجالس وأما بنسبة حفظه للقرآن فحاليا الفقير لا أدري بالعام بالضبط ولكن إن شاء الله إذا اطلعت عليه إن شاء الله نذكره في الأسبوع أو الدرس القادم إن شاء الله تعالى والله أعلم As for the question regarding Habib Umar's age with, um, when he started memorizing the Quran 
Um, he's not, uh, Sheikh Ali said he's not too sure as to what age he was, but inshallah he will do some research and then inform us in the upcoming lessons, inshallah. As for the second half of the question regarding attending gatherings, he started attending it, uh, attending these gatherings, Sheikh Ali said, when he was about four or five years old. Sual uh, al-Adibado, Sayyidi. كيف يمكن نستفيد استفادة تام من سيد الحبيب عمر عبر لما يكون يعني عبر النت مثلا وكيف يمكن عبر هذه الوسيلة عبر النت نأخذ من حاله So the questioner asked, how do we take the most of, how do we benefit from maximally um, from Habib Omar during his online meetings and how can we take from his state? Fadl <coughs> Saidi. Naam. Yagulun anna minal minal ulama wal mashayikh alladhi ta'thiruhu مع الجلوس معه وتأثيره مع مع سماع صوته أو مشاهدته في صورة أو مشاهدته في وسائل التواصل يقولون أن سيد الحيمر من أقوى الناس تأثيرا حتى بالفيديو والصوت والصورة وغيرها من الأمور وهذه لا يعطيها الله كل أحد فلذلك نحن عندما يعني يكون عندنا تعلق بسيد الحبي عمر أولا التعلق والمحبة هذا أقوى الأسباب في الربط بيننا وبين الشيوخ كما قالوا عند التعلق بأهل السر يبدو لك السر هذا السبب الأول السبب الثاني أن, أن لا نخالف ما, ما يأمروننا به أو نفعل ما ينهونا عنه هذا السبب الثاني ثم السبب الثالث هذه المتابعة التي ذكرها صاحب السؤال المتابعة عبر الإنترنت وخصوصا ثلاثة مجالس دائما سيد الحبيب عمر يوصي بها ثلاثة مجالس دائما يوصي بها وهي المولد الأسبوعي الذي يقام يوم الخميس وكذلك جلسة الاثنين والثالث وهو درس الأربعاء في جبس النور المبين الذي يقيمه سيد الحبيب عمر في يوم الأربعاء فكان يقول من حضر أو تابع هذه المجالس الثلاثة فقد أخذ عنا الأخذ التام والله أعلم In response to this question it has been said that from, um, from the scholars worldwide that Habib Omar in particular is one of those scholars that you can feel even his presence if it's through the internet in terms of the effect that he has on those watching. As for one's connection, then this can be established through your attachment and your love. Because as the saying goes, that the one who connects to the people of secrets, secrets will start to manifest to them. Another point that Sheikh Ali mentioned is that we should, after hearing his counsels, we should not go against his words. This will also result in strengthening our attachment and connection to Habib Omar. In addition to what Sheikh Ali said is, and this is specifically pertaining to the online gatherings, is that Habib Omar has put a special emphasis in three particular gatherings online always that 
people should attend and not miss out on. Number one, the Moli gathering, which takes place on Thursday evening. Number two, the Tafsir lesson, which takes place on Monday evening. And number three, the lesson of Ihya of Imam al-Ghazali, which takes place on Wednesday evening. And fortunately, all these lessons have been, are, are translated to English, alhamdulillah. And then, Habib Umar then further commented regarding these online gatherings that the individual who follows these gatherings and makes an effort to attend them, then Habib Umar said that they have taken from us completely. Nuasil bil asila, Sayyidi? Tafadal, tafadal. Kam bakhya lakum min al لا فيها سيد الحبيب عمر إجازة من حيث تجيزنا بها ونرتبط بسندكم The question is asking is there any litanies which Habib Omar has given إجازة to Sheikh Ali that he can perhaps share with us so we can connect to this chain. Father Sayyidi. بالنسبة للإجازات نحن يعني نقول الحمد لله سيد الحبيب عمر ما زال موجود وإن شاء الله يعني تحصلون على الإجازة منه مباشرة إن شاء الله. الله. يعني لا أستطيع أن أجيز. وصاحب الإجازة موجود وإجازته بكبرها بنورها بعظمها يعني نخاف أن أن ننقصها عندما نجيز غيرنا وهو موجود شيخ علي responded to this question this um, question by saying that we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Habib Umar is still alive with us living today and he said that he doesn't feel comfortable giving ijazas out when the owner of the ijaza is still among, among us today. And he fears also that should it, should it happen that he does give the ijaza out, then it could be that that which he's giving out will not be as concentrated as that which we could get directly from Habib Umar in terms of the, the, the noor and the blessings that are covered with this spiritual prescription. Hayakum Allah, Sayyidi. No. Kayfa yumkin lil murid an yarif an Sayyid al Habib Umar radi bihi. وكيف نحن نرضيه؟ The questioner said, how can we know that Habib Umar is pleased with us and how can we please him the most? نعم يذكر هذا سيد الحبيب عمر وكان يقول كل ما يقرب إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ويرضي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فهذا هو الذي يرضي الله سبحانه وتعالى وهذا هو الذي يرضينا فكل ما يرضي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يرضي سيد الحبي عمر وكل ما لا يرضي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فهو كذلك لا يرضي سيد الحبي عمر وهذا يعني الجواب باختصار 
كل ما كان فيه رضا الله يحرص الإنسان عليه فهو يقرب قربه من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقربه من الصالحين وقربه من الله سبحانه وتعالى هو قرب واحد طريقه واحد وهو البحث ومتابعة رضا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم So in response to this question as to how do we know he's pleased with us and how do we please him the most, Sheikh Ali, may Allah preserve him, mentioned that this is uh, something that Habib Umar has spoken about. And Habib Umar said that everything that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as Um, the pious predecessors and that which they are upon, everything which pleases them pleases us. Sual uh, Yaqul. Hal Sayyid al Habib Umar Lahu Toji Khas Bishabab and الكتب التي ينبغي أن يقرأوها. The questioner mentioned has Habib Umar advised what books should be read to youth. بل السؤال يقول سيدي هل السيد الحبيب عمر وجه لنا عن كتب التي ينبغي نحن نقرأها على الشباب. نعم السيد الحبيب عمر غالبا كان يوصي بقراءة كتب الإمام الحداد كتب الإمام الحداد هذه هي دائما يعني يوصي بها الشباب وغير الشباب أيضا وكذلك هو سيد الحبيب عمر كان يدرس الشباب في دار المصطفى كتاب للشيخ محمد سعيد بن محمد رمضان البوطي كان كتاب اسمه لا يحضرني اسمه بالضبط ولكن هو يتكلم عن مشكلات الشباب الشباب ومشكلات العصر أو هكذا يعني تقريبا اسمه مقارب لهذا الشيء فكان يدرس في هذا الكتاب فلعله في كتاب الشباب هذا الإمام البوطي إن شاء الله الشاب يجد بغيته في ما يمكن أن أن يستفيد منه في عمر الشباب من هذا الكتاب إن شاء الله والله أعلم. From amongst the books which Habib Omar always places emphasis on is the books of Imam Al Haddad رضي الله عنه and from what Sheikh Ali also mentioned is that he has also heard Habib Omar mentioning recommending a particular book which um, Sheikh Ali is not sure of the title of which was authored by Dr. Ramadan Bhuti may Allah have mercy on him and within this book within this book um, it's got something to do with um, issues pertaining to the youth I'll just repeat that so um, it's two sets of um, Um, two sets of um, pieces of information that Sheikh Ali said regarding the books that Habib Omar has advised that should be read to the youth. Number one, it's the books of Imam al-Haddad. And then number two is a particular book from authored by Dr. Ramadan Bhuti, may Allah have mercy on him, regarding issues that um, pertaining to the youth. سؤال الذي بعده فالسؤال يقول سيدي السائل يعتذر ويقول لم يزل مبتدي في كل ما نتحدث عنه م- 
كانه حصل انفصال في الخط سيدي هل هل تسمح لنا ان نعيد الجواب جوابكم نحن لا بس الجواب مكتوب لدينا سنعيدها بس الى المستمعين لا بس لا بس um, uh, apologies for this um, interruption um, we've uh, admin has requested that um, the answer be repeated i think um, a connection fault took place here by by my end um, is that the case admin must we repeat the question or can we proceed with the next questions okay admin has um, requested that we repeat the question um, so the question was has habib umar advised what books should be read to youth and sheikh ali responded to this saying that from what habib umar may allah preserve him has mentioned is that number one the books of imam al haddad and number two a particular book which we are unsure of the title which was authored by dr ramadan buti may allah have mercy on him pertaining to the youth uh, admin was that clear and can we proceed with the next question okay we've been given the green light to proceed um asail yaqul sayidi um yaqtadir wa yaqul لم يزال مبتدي في هذه الأشياء التي نتعلم عنها عن سيد الحبيب عمر ومعظم ما تلقاها هي عن سيد الحبيب عمر كان بواسطة الرؤية رؤيات مرايا التي رأى في المنام و ومواقف غر مواقف أخرى غريبة على كل حال أريد أن أصرح لك سؤال وسامحونا في هذا في هذا السؤال يسألك هل حبيب عمر يعتبر من أولياء الله؟ So um, the question um, was a direct question, so um, I'll just um, repeat it um, so everybody benefits. Um, the questioner mentioned that um, they are new to um, to um, th this um, topic or um, this, um, they are new to learning about Habib Omar and most of what they've learned has been um, through dreams and other um, incidents that, that took place. And um, they would now like to ask, um, despite um, these dreams and uh, other strange things that have happened to them, they would like to ask if Habib Omar is considered um if habib umar is considered a wali a friend of allah and and then the questioner um just um apologized if this question is uh not appropriate and on, on behalf of the foundation um there's no question inshallah that's not appropriate father sayyidi now وكلنا في هذا الطريق نعتبر مبتدئين يعني نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يهيئ لنا الأسباب وأن يوصلنا بأهل الله وأن يقوي رابطتنا بهم حتى نكون معهم في الدنيا وفي الآخرة آمين اللهم آمين, آمين. ومن حيث سؤاله هل, هل سيد الحبي عمر من أولياء الله فأولا من, من ناحية حسن الظن فينبغي علينا أن نحسن ظننا بأي مؤمن كل المؤمنين علينا أن نحسن الظن بهم بأنهم من أولياء الله هذا من حيث حسن الظن أما العلماء فهم بلا شك من باب أولى كما يقول سيدنا الإمام الشافعي يقول إذا لم يكن العلماء هم أولياء الله فليس لله ولي إذن فالعلماء بلا شك هم أولياء الله فكيف إذا كان هذا العالم يعني من أهل الرسوخ ومن أهل الثبات ومن أهل الدعوة إلى الله ومن أهل العمل بالعلم 
وكذلك من أهل الكرامات وعندما أقول كرامات ليس معناه الكرامات يعني أن يطير في الهواء وأن يعني ماذا نقول ممكن يرى الذي لا يراه الناس لا كما يقول العلماء أعظم كرامة هي الاستقامة ونحن ولله الحمد ما رأينا يعني علماء كعلمائنا وخصوصا سيد الحبيمر في الاستقامة استقامة في المجالس في الحفاظ عليها في الانضباط فيها في في الخروج في الدعوة إلى الله في النفع في ال... يعني سبحان الله وهذه كلها بلا شك إشارات وعلامات على أنهم من أولياء الله سبحانه وتعالى والله سبحانه وتعالى أعلم <تصفيق> So the questioner mentioned that they are a beginner and then Sheikh Ali humbly responded to that word and said that we are all beginners. And then mentioned, um, made a dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to spiritually e elevate and reach the ranks of the pious, inshallah. To answer the question, Sheikh Ali then said that first thing is good opinion. And we know that um, the the Um, can everybody hear me and see me? And can we continue? Uh, Edmund, can you hear me? Can you see me? Can we continue? Okay, um, uh, um, uh, Edmund, can you see me? Can we continue? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Uh, we do appreciate everybody's response. However, because um, the admin is controlling the recording, it's very important that they can hear and see us. So we just need a response from them. Um, if you can hear me, yeah, okay, I can't see you. Um, I uh, will resume just now. Okay, super. So, um, so um, let's just, um, as we um, got that um, connection interrupted slightly, the question was, was, was about um, um, the, um, the sister or the brother who said that they're a beginner. They've seen Habib Omar um, only in the dreams. And um, they want to know um, just... Um, And they said that um, they just want to know basically if Habib Omar is considered to be a wali and then um, apologize for the inappropriate question to which we responded that there's no question which is inappropriate. Sheikh Ali answered this saying that um, you saying that you're a beginner in your um, question, we are all beginners. And then Sheikh Ali made du'as that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to spiritually advance, inshallah. He then began his question was saying that 
As far as good opinion is concerned, husna dhan, as it's known in the Arabic language, is concerned, we should have good opinion that all of the believers are awliya. They are from among the friends of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first thing. So that's just the general answer. And then he mentioned that, Sheikh Ali mentioned that Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, said that if a scholar is not from among the awliya, then they then there are no awliya. So, based on the general answer as to all believers, we should have good opinion that they are from the awliya, and the specific answer of a scholar, i.e., Habib Umar himself being a scholar, then not only is he from among the believers, not only is he a scholar, but he's a scholar which um, implements his knowledge from what not only we have witnessed, but other people have um, mentioned. And on top of all of this, that other things that, that we would say that would, would um, give us certainty that he's from the Oliya is the many miracles that have appeared um, from him. And Sheikh Ali then said that when you hear the word miracle, don't think of, um, he's not mentioning flying and other um, extraordinary things. The greatest of, Sheikh Ali said that the greatest of miracles is steadfastness. That the greatest of miracles is steadfastness. And we definitely see this within Habib Umar in terms of his steadfastness with attending to the gatherings, whether it be at the institution of Darul Mustafa, or just the other activities that he's engaged with. Um, the connection cut off slightly there. Did everybody, or sorry, did Edmund hear um, the question and um, as well as the answer? Can we proceed with the next question? نواصل الان سيدي ثواني تفضل so it seems as if um, the connection cut off when we were speaking about steadfastness and um, so we'll just repeat that then that um, before we mention steadfastness, um, Sheikh Ali said that from among the things that um, confirm or that give us some um, certainty that Habib Uma is from the Oliya is the miracles that have taken place that have been witnessed from him. And he mentioned that when we mention the word miracles, um, he's not speaking about flying and other extraordinary um, events um, and happenings. However, he's speaking about the greatest of miracles, as the saying goes, as the, the, the scholars have said in Arabic, أَعْدَمَ الْكَرَامَ هِيَ الْإِسْتِقَامَ الْإِسْتِقَامَ هِيَ أَعْدَمَ الْكَرَامَ That the greatest of miracles is steadfastness. And then Sheikh Ali said to this that he has personally witnessed um, Habib Umar's steadfastness, steadfastness as far as his gatherings are concerned, whether it be in Dar al-Mustafa or other places. Uh, we'll now move on, inshallah, to the next question.
Um, and just um, for formality, uh, the questions that were sent directly, um, if people could um, send them just to everybody, um, so everybody could read them. Uh, the question says here that, are there any attributes which Habib Omar has mentioned about Habib Abu Bakr Adani, who passed away recently? Um, Asail Yaqul, um, Hal Hunaka A Sifat, or Hal Hunaka A Fadail, Leti Zakara has said Al Habib Omar, and Al Marhum Al Habib Abu Bakr Al Adani. ولا ألا هذا ليس خارج الموضوع سيدي واصل كنت ترجمنا السؤال كنت ترجمت السؤال نعم خالفناكم الآن نعم نعم لا بس لأجل الوقت يعني بالنسبة لسيدي الحبيب عمر وما قاله عن سيدي الحبيب بكر المشهور في كثير من المواضع يذكر السيد الحبيب عمر عن فضائل الحبيب بكر المشهور وكان من آخرها في جنازة الحبيب أبو بكر العدني لما توفي الحبيب بكر العدني ذكر السيد الحبيب عمر بعض الأمور التي كان يمتاز بها السيد الحبيب بكر العدني فيعني لمن أراد أن يرجع إليها إن شاء الله وعليكم الترجمة لهم إن شاء الله لأجل الوقت يعني نعم and um, just so we can keep the time concentrated and directed to what's directly being spoken about, i.e. Um, Habib Omar bin Hafid, um, he has mentioned many things regarding Habib Abu Bakr um, al-Adani, al and um, from amongst those things was that which he mentioned in, um, um, uh, during his janaza, um, when he was um, speaking about some of the virtues of Habib Abu Al-Adani. May Allah have mercy on him. However, we'll just suffice with the topic. Um, uh, we'll just concentrate at the moment on, on, on what's being mentioned, inshallah. Mm, okay. If, uh, is there anybody else having um, problems with the audio? Um, Edmund, can you hear me? Can you see me? نتأكد بس أن الصوت والصورة سيدي. نعم لا بس. الأسئلة طبعا لم يزال هناك أسئلة. ما زال كثير؟ سأعود الآن. لعل هناك سؤال واحد متبقى. لا بس إذا كان واحد لا بس لأن طيب. عندنا اقترب وقت صلاة الظهر طيب so allow us then to conclude on um, the last question إن شاء الله uh, Edmon is my sound and video clear because I'm getting some messages from people saying that they cannot hear and some cannot see Okay, so we'll proceed then um, with the last question. Um, as for the individuals who cannot um, hear or see us properly, inshallah, there will be a recording. Um, this lesson has been recorded and that recording, inshallah, will be shared um, on our WhatsApp groups, inshallah, and other social media platforms. Sa'il uh, Yaqul. Um, قد وصل إلى تريمة عائلته قبل أيام قليلة وهم على مذهب المذهب الحنفية وتشعر ش شيئا من ال um, الغربة أو غير مر غير مرتاح بسبب معظم الناس هو عليهم على مذهب إمام شافعي ف. كونهم على مذهب إمام أبو حنيفة ك 
كيف أصبه محبوبا إن السيد الحبيب عمر الذي هو على مذهب إمام الشافعي. So the questioner asked um, that they've arrived to Tareem um, with their family a few days ago. Allah bless them, mashallah. Um, they are on the Hanafi madhab and they feel a bit strange because majority of um, the people, um, if not everybody in Tareem is upon the Shafi madhab. Um, and as a Hanafi, how can they become more beloved to Habib Omar? And inshallah, we'll conclude with this uh, question, inshallah. Father Zaidi. Now, I want to say to them, I'm grateful for you in the Tareem and your presence in the Holy Spirit. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for the religion, يعني لا يوجد مشكلة في المذهب المذاهب الأربعة كلها معتمدة وبحمد الله كلها لها كتب كثيرة موجودة في مكتبة دار المصطفى الكتب في المذاهب الأربعة كلها موجودة في دار المصطفى وحتى أنه بعض الطلاب القدامى في دار المصطفى يوجد منهم حنفيون وكذلك لهم دروس مخصصة بينهم البين يعني يتدارسون هذه الأمور والمسائل الفقهية في مذهبهم فلا إشكال في المذهب المذاهب الأربعة كلها إن شاء الله من الطرق التي تؤدي إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى والطرق إلى الله كما يقال على عدد أنفاس الخلائق يعني كثيرة جدا فلا إشكال في المذهب وإن شاء الله يعني يجدون ما يعني بغيتهم في تريم والأهم في دار المصطفى أن يؤخذ العلم والعلم ليس الفقه فقط العلم في هناك علم القلوب علم التصوف علم التوحيد هذا كله متفق في المذاهب غالبا وكذلك السلوك ومن ثم أيضا الدعوة إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى فلا إشكال في المذهب وهل يعني صاحب المذهب الحنفي يكون قريبا من سيد الحبيب عمر نعم بل ربما حتى يكون أقرب منا نحن الشافعية بحسب القلوب لأن الأولياء سبحان الله نظرهم يعني مشابها لنظر الله سبحانه وتعالى والله ينظر إلى قلوبكم نظر الله سبحانه وتعالى للقلوب فمتى صفى القلب وامتلأ بالإيمان والمحبة والتواضع والصفات الحميدة فهو بلا شك يكون قريبا من الصالحين وقريبا من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقريبا من الله سبحانه وتعالى شيخ علي بيجان with um, making duas and um, wishing this family well and um, that they stay in Tareem is blessed inshallah and then mentioned to, responded and said that regarding you or your family being upon the Hanafi madhab, he said that um, you shouldn't feel strange at all or uncomfortable because within Darul Mustafa, not only are there students upon the Hanafi madhab or that have graduated from, from, um, from Darul Mustafa while they are still on the Hanafi madhab, um, but even if you look within the libraries, you'll find books on all the madhabs, on all the, 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 the other madhabs. And know that the paths or proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gaining closeness to him, is not restricted within a particular school of thought. Because as the saying goes, that the paths to Allah are as much as the breaths that we take. So when you are at an institution or connected to institution like that of Dar al-Mustafa, the knowledge that is found therein, the dawah that is found therein, as well as the spiritual wayfaring is not restricted and it's not a condition for one to benefit from the knowledge, the dawah and the and the knowledge, the dawah, and the spiritual wafering for you to be in a particular madhab. And it may, it may in fact be that somebody upon the Hanavi madhab 
Um, Sheikh Ali um, said this um, as a light note, I would say, and out of his, his humility and humor, that it may be that somebody upon the Hanafi mother is more closer to me who's upon the Shafi mother, to, um, to our teachers. And when we say to our teachers, we say to the pious predecessors, and we say, when we're saying that to the pious predecessors, we're saying to the messenger of Allah, and this all translates to being connected. Then his answer was saying that it's not about the madhab. It's not about which school of thought you are on. Rather, it's about one's attachment. And based on the purity that lies within the heart and the love which you fill your heart with and other praiseworthy traits such as humility, this will all result in you gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we mentioned right at the beginning of our lessons that to please Habib Umar, focus on pleasing anything that pleases Allah and his Messenger and be assured that therein you will find your Sheikh's pleasure. Because that which pleases Allah, no doubt pleases Habib Umar. May Allah preserve him. Nam Sayyidi. Al-Asila bin Minhuna kadin tahina Sayyidi. I mean, and then also to Mr. Gay, but the man by him by him, by him, or more in a mean. Now, Kunto got a tap to Fatiha, I grow Hassel al Moksud. So, I'm doing a little bit of a little bit Sheikh Ali has um, now concluded yeah. the lesson with, um, as is the custom of our lessons and um, that which he saw from his teachers in Darul Mustafa, with making a dua for everybody and concluding that dua with Surah Fatiha with the intention of that which he requested um, gets answered from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer a dua which somebody says it's not a condition that we need to understand it or not. So although the door is made in the Arabic language, we will recite Surah Al-Fatiha with the intention of that which was asked and requested to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, to be answered, inshallah ta'ala. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Hayakumullah Sayyidi, Jazakumullah Khaira. Hayakumullah Khaira.